Hey everyone, it's Robert Hall and in today's video we are doing a review on the Zhiyun Crane 2S. For this video I enlisted the help of my friend Aaron here who is a wedding and commercial cinematographer and has more hours holding the Crane 2 <laughs> than anybody else that I know. So a little background, Aaron borrowed this from me for a little bit just so that he could kind of develop some opinions on it in a real world working scenario. I've been shooting it with myself and then we went out yesterday and we went to uh, Detroit and we just kind of shot around with this and the original Crane too. So this review is largely focused on kind of what changed from the Crane too. What's really nice about that is, is I also got an A7S III uh, as well. And so we were able to just kind of have the exact same camera, the exact same setup and see what both could do and how they held up to things and just what felt right and what felt a little weird or anything to that degree. The most obvious and probably the most advertised upgrade of the Crane 2S over the Crane 2 would be the increased payload. I, actually, I don't know. Maybe it's this carbon fiber handle. <laughs> they do like to advertise <laughs> that a like lot. They like to advertise that a ton. But yeah, I think the biggest thing would just be the payload change. And it's a little unclear though. They don't exactly have a specific amount. Now the, the conversation with gimbals uh, pretty much across all of the different providers has been more of a, it can hold up to this type of weight, but it always depends on how you shift it on the, on the plate, how it's balanced throughout the entire rig that you're putting on there. If it's way, way back heavy, clearly there's only so much you can slide forward or backwards before you run into arms or run out of plate space, things like that. What's clear though, is that it's an upgrade. Like mm -hmm. this thing can handle a 1DX Mark II, a Panasonic S1H, can handle a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K or 4K. Like it's designed to handle larger cameras, larger rigs than the Crane 2 was. And that just all boils down to it having some beefier motors. Now we just told you we both use the Sony a7S III, which is not exactly a large rig. It's actually a quite compact rig, but we did put on my 100 to 400 <laughs> millimeter lens, which is ridiculous. It's actually not that heavy of a lens, but the fact that its barrel extends as you zoom and it zooms all the way to 400, that lens can get very long and very front heavy. And we were able to zoom it out to around 300 millimeters at max. We got it, we got it out to there. Uh, past that, we started running into issues of it was way too front heavy and kind of fighting the motors. Now the motors never really officially gave up or anything like that. It just didn't have the best image quality due to uh, some vibrations. Yep. I don't think we were ever tapping into the payload there, not at all, but the fact is we couldn't mount the camera any further backwards because then we're running into the back arm or literally smacking the EVF on the back arm uh, to zoom out more. But just being able to mount that thing on there at all with the length of that lens, I mean, we'd be able to probably put a 70 to 200 on there. Oh, easy enough, I feel. And honestly too, uh, right in front of us, we've got it set to the 45 degree arm angle. We did not have it set up to that for the 100 to 400. Maybe now it could take it a lot easier with the idea of having just that little bit extra space. One cool thing about this is that you can switch switch it from a 90 degree rear arm to the 45 degree rear arm. And as you can see right now, it's in the 45 degree and that's designed so that if you have a camera on here, maybe like an A7 Mark III that doesn't have a flip out screen, then you can use the 45 degree arm so that that back arm doesn't obstruct your view of this or it doesn't trigger your EVF. It took four bolts to pull the arm and another four to pull the cover to get to the wiring harness and you just pull it all apart, put it together with, with just two bolts and, and one little securing bolt for the, the new trench cover that kind of goes in over it. The only thing that's like a little bit of a pain is the wire. Like yeah. tucking that wire in does take a little bit of determination. <laughs> I didn't want to mess with it. You got it in though. I, I got it in. There's a very deep cutaway that you can kind of smash some of the wire down into. Now my only concern with all of this is if you're constantly switching between the 45 arm and the 90 arm, I kind of have some fear about opening up that cable, yeah. crunching it down, opening it up, crunching it down, opening it up. Yeah, it's been my experience that if you if you flex a wire a lot, it's not gonna end up good. So those are two huge features, the added payload and the 45 degree arm option, but neither of those <laughs> are our favorite thing about this and our, we're actually using our favorite thing about this right now, yeah. and that is the axis locks. If you've had a previous gimbal, once you power it down and your camera's all loosey-goosey, 
this is awkward, right? DJI was the first one I think to implement it, but beyond that, uh, a bunch of other companies have absorbed it. I've never had the chance to have one because once I got into the Crane 2, I didn't really see a reason to jump over to the Ronin. I shot an event with this and it was really nice just to lock them with the camera on there and walk away and not have to worry about it swinging around or smashing it and with the new A7S uh, Mark III on there. I was a little... It is especially nice with the uh, flip screen on the A7S mm -hmm. Mark III. You've got this flip screen out that you're shooting with. Uh, you know, that can, that can be dangerous if you leave that out and it starts spinning around. So uh, this just protects your camera, makes it more comfortable. It also makes it way easier to just find a balancing point. Oh, it's so much nicer. And then just handhold it and, and walk around with it. It's just more comfortable to hold as you transport. And also, if you're setting this down in a car, now it's not going to be shifting around as much so way easier to transport so next up there are some really smart mounting options with the crane 2s that weren't available on the crane 2 the big one being this detachable quick plate the way this is designed is it has quarter 20 threads on the bottom so you can attach another quick plate to it which means that you don't have to rebalance your rig every time you take it off so if we're taking it off just at the base plate and then we have another quick plate attached to it below. Then we can throw this on our tripod rig or our monopod rig or our slider, whatever else we're using with that quick plate. And then all you have to do is lock it back in to the same spot and you're good to go. No rebalancing provided you don't change your lens or monitor or anything like that. Well, and the other nice thing about this too is it not only can be that quick release, but if you need this for whatever camera rig you have a little bit further away from this arm due to maybe the handles a lot wider out like on the uh, Blackmagic Pockets, right. you can kind of have this extension out instead of having to add an adapter arm or anything like that. And then you can just lock it in. You've got a further gap between that plate, that inch plate and uh, the end of your camera. Yeah, it just gives you options for balancing wider mm -hmm. rigs. Instead of having to totally off balance it or something yeah. or cheese plate it. We have our plate, our initial plate right here, but then we also have a secondary plate receiver right there that just takes the same plate as this one and you can take your camera off, slide it in to be a vertical, vertical camera for whether it's social media, TikTok, anything like that. And it's really quick and easy. It's just like this. You do have to rebalance it. So if you balanced it here, you do have to rebalance it here once you put it on there. It prevents you from needing a cage to be able to mount your, your camera sideways on this one. Instead, you can just use the same plate, move it over there, and you're good to go. So having this removable quick plate, having the extra mounting attachment point here, and the increased payload because of the beefier motors, all of those do come with a little bit of a weight increase, actually a lot of it. This is 50% <laughs> heavier than the Crane 2. This is just over four pounds, and the Crane 2 is 2.6 pounds, I believe. And so that kind of leads us into some other changes that they made probably to gain some of that weight back. And the first being their, their other favorite marketing thing, this carbon fiber handle, which it looks nice. It looks nice. It honestly helps create a great overall design to this. It ties in uh, kind of the gold with the black and then adds a little bit of a, a texturized kind of look to it, even though it, it's it's smooth, but it's, it's nice. Yeah. It's just... I'm, I find myself asking why mm -hmm. when... There's zero function. Like the, the yeah. handle of the crane too is fine. Oh yeah. So there's zero function added to it. Um, and, and obviously that pattern isn't even visible anywhere else. No. Um, it just looks like a way to throw carbon fiber into the SEO. <laughs> it's like throwing a carbon fiber hood onto like a regular Honda Civic. Right. <laughs> and I think, I think they were aiming for weight savings with it, but I doubt it's that much considering the original one was an aluminum bit that doesn't feel like I held them both in my hands next to each other. They don't feel all that much different. This does yeah. overall look way more polished than the it Crane does. 2 did. So I'll definitely give them that. Tripod legs are not only plastic, but they're also like cut away. There's all this extra space here. Now I will say, despite them being plastic, I think they're just a tiny bit beefier they are. Than the Crane 2, so they're a little bit more comfortable well, in the I hand. I think what they try to do is they try to keep a similar diameter from here to here. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's it's a nice feel, it's a good transfer. One thing that's also nice is these have rubber on the outside, so they're a little bit grippier. That was a game alloy. changer yeah. compared to, now, now whenever I use the Crane 2, I feel like I'm missing something down there. It doesn't feel quite like what, what uh, memory should be serving. Now the 2S still uses three 18650 batteries, which is exactly the same as the Crane 2. So if you're already kitted out with 18650 batteries, then you're good to go. 
I'm personally glad they didn't change that. <laughs> I am too. Yeah. And honestly, even if you aren't kitted out with them or you don't have an extra set lying around from a from the Crane 2, they aren't expensive. You, you can find alternative models of them too, even though Zion does not recommend that. They recommend you use you know their versions of it due to milliamp hour, due to whatever. But as you know, kind of filmmakers, we've, we've figured out you can bend a lot of these rules a lot. Like I was using Nightcore that were, I think about 20% more yeah. milliamp hours. So you get significantly more battery life out of them. And if you're charging a camera off of it, that little bit extra can mean make or break. But one thing we're both happy about is that they did not go with an internal battery design. I am so glad of that. That is the one thing that prevented me from going with uh, the DJI Ronin. Yeah. And because once you're done, you're done. You have to wait for that thing to charge or you're buying another handle, mm -hmm. which is just kind of ridiculous. They did also change this wheel on the side, which can be used for things like pulling focus. And it's not only smaller, smaller area, it's got less indentations and more of just a fine rubber grip on it. And it's a much tighter pull it, to it. It feels like a fluid head type of type of yes. movement to it a little bit, which is really, really nice because because the other one it was great to have it built into the into the uh, handle, but it was large, you found yourself hitting it, so if you did have it connected, you had to really, really make sure your hands were in a different position. It was super easy to twist it a little bit. If I grip around the textured area on the handle, I still have space to touch the trigger that's on here in the back, and I am completely clear of the wheel on the side, so I don't have to worry about bumping this if I were to be using the focus puller. And another little addition right here, is <laughs> they added some quarter 20 mounts which were completely gone on the crane too although they did have like some type of little attachment for the handle they, there were several aftermarket options and zion had a few as well on their own where you could then add a monitor you could add anything else that you needed to, to add on to it but with them built in right here it's already ready to go for a two-handed setup if you want or your monitor or if you need to do a battery or attach uh, you know anything like their new video uh, assist or anything like that in terms of control and display the display is a little bit larger although who's really looking at that other than for like one big letter honestly I didn't even notice that it was larger <laughs> until I read the fact that it was, I was yeah. like, oh, I guess it's a little bit bigger. Other than that, the controls on the front are largely the same. You've got a joystick, you've got a, a dial slash D-pad with a button in the center. You've got a mode button, you've got a power button that doubles as a record button if you connect your camera. Now in terms of connectivity, we've got four type C USB ports and that is for a combination of either attaching to your camera for power attaching your camera up for some level of control, like mm -hmm. information signals. And then you also have access to other accessories such as the focus puller. I was really impressed with, as of right now, the uh, Sony a7S Mark III is not on the list of controllable cameras through the Crane 2S. I assume this can easily be set up and, and gone through with a firmware update, just like they've done with many Nikon cameras and things like that with the Crane 2. But I was very, very happy to find out that it actually worked. It's a day saver just to be able to go record, stop record, record, stop record, instead of having to reach up and hit it physically on the camera. This brings us to the trigger that is on the <laughs> back here, which it's nice because it's an addition. I wish you could control what mode the trigger starts or does. This one will always put it in follow mode. No matter what mode you're in, it comes back to follow mode. So it's nice that it exists because this was not on the Crane 2S, so it does give you the option to quickly switch your modes and basically do a single shot that features multiple modes but at the same time, uh, we both feel that a more pronounced button would be more comfortable, more obvious that you're tapping it. It's not a deal breaker in any way, shape, or form. And honestly, I bet you give us a handful of shoots and yeah. you immediately trigger where it is, how to use it, when to use it. Yeah. It's just kind of an experience thing, I think. All right, the very last thing that we're gonna be a little nitpicky about is the case design. So this is the Crane 2 S case in my hand. And this is the Crane 2 in mine. And this is durable. This is a very durable case. Everything has a specific place. Um, it keeps everything well organized and it's going to take a beating. This just doesn't look like something I would want to walk into a gig with because it has a styrofoam or packaging material look to it. I do feel like if I was taking the Crane 2S into more commercial situations, things like that, I'd want to get a Pelican design for it. It is very hardcore styrofoam. 
it is actively trying to be broken right now by Rob, and it's kind of funny that it's 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 mm. handling. I mean, like I'm I'm twisting this thing, and it's not. It's not cracking. Nope. Hey, that okay. honestly. It's, that's pretty impressive, but it still just looks like a styrofoam case. Whereas this yeah. looks nice. This looks a little bit nicer. They they did a, a faux like carbon fiber lid to it. See, Back this to is, the carbon fiber. Yeah, this is where they were like, wait. Carbon fiber is the ticket. Maybe this Maybe. did really well, and they were like, let's put it on the X. Well, if it did gimbal. well, they would have brought it back for that. Yeah, but they were like, no, 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 it's on the gimbal now. You don't oh, need okay. it here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's put it on the gimbal. Uh, no, I do I do like this case. This case has actually served me pretty well. It, you know, briefcase handle, they even have a, uh, a shoulder strap that I don't think I've ever used and I might have lost at some point in time. The only thing is, this does hold the spots a lot better than this one will. This one has a little bit more, things tend to shift in, in movement sometimes. Going back to the axis locks. Yeah. I'm never using that case. Like I, <laughs> I would have it the way I have it set up and I would probably just take it out of the house, onto the job, yeah. just like that. And if you needed to put it in a case, it'd probably go in a case with a bunch of other gear anyways. Yeah. And so yes, we're picky about the case, but ultimately would that impact our experience with the gimbal? Probably not. All right, so my final thought. I'm extremely impressed with this. Like the payload increases that we've seen over the last few years have just been absolutely nuts. This one specifically over the Crane 2, I mean, you've got the beefier motors, you've got the vertical mount, you've got the quick plate, you've got the 45 degree option in the back. So many solid upgrades over the Crane 2 that for it to be similarly priced to when the Crane 2 came out, I think that this is a great deal. And on top of that, I think that it's also positioned to potentially be best in class. Like for its pricing, I think this is probably about as good as it gets. My opinion of it is actually very similar. I think it's a fantastic gimbal. I think it does exactly what you need it to do. My only question is, as a Crane 2 owner, would I buy this gimbal? Honestly, if I hadn't upgraded my camera to an A7S Mark III, which this apparently talks to, I would be doubting it. But what is really, really nice and what is key is communication. Now we might see a firmware update from Zion come out again for the Crane 2, which will allow the, the Sony A7S Mark III to be used on it. Considering my Crane 2 seen some wear, it's seen some action, I think I might be looking to see if I can swap it out for this one. Pricing on this thing is actually flexing a little bit already mm -hmm. because when I looked it up, I seen 599, 529, 569. So seeing a little bit of bounce already, which is surprising given how new it is, but I've got it linked in the description below if you're interested in purchasing it. And you guys are gonna be seeing Aaron a little bit more on the channel. We've got a lot of collaborations coming up, kind of discussing photographer, videographer relationships. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we got one video that we have planned that I think you guys will really like. But uh, in addition to that, just uh, on more video-centric topics, I believe I'm gonna be having Aaron in more regularly. So that's gonna be fun. He's been working with me a lot on BTS stuff and we've worked together for years. So I'm really excited for that. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a lot of good times. All right, like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you wanna see more of my videos and until next time, keep on shooting.